congratulations because shareholders wanted buybacks. But now you have a lot of money to play with. What will you do with it? All right, let me let me set the scene. I mean, <laughs> it's a great day for Rio Tinto today. Um, I'm very proud of what the team has achieved. We have delivered on what we said, kept on promises, which was delivering superior cash return for shareholders. As you said, $9.7 billion, including 5.2 of the of dividend, which was the highest in the history of the company. 135 years, good. So today is a great day. We're in good shape. We have a strong balance sheet. We've got the momentum. We've got the growth options. What shareholders should expect from us, just keep on delivering. You know, commit, we are committed to our superior cash return in short, medium and long term. We've got the momentum. We just keep pushing. OK, talk to me about your growth options. Will it be Absolutely. through M&A? So let's say you have, you have three options, right? And you could do all three at once, but you either <laughs> give more back to investors, you invest more, so you spend on CapEx, or, or you buy companies. What's your preferred well, it, option? It's slightly more complicated than that. Of we course. have a very disciplined. But it's TV. <laughs> I know, I understand, fair enough. But you know, we have a very disciplined capital allocation. We do it twice a year, and for us, it's about two things. It's about maintaining the strength of our balance sheet because we believe in the capital-intensive business like Rio Tinto. It's very important. It's about rewarding our shareholders with superior cash returns. That's exactly what we did today, and it's about investing in the long term. So we've got three drivers in terms of investment for long term, and when we say growth. It's about growth in cash flows. It's not about volume. It's not about market share. We're not interested in being the largest. It's about being the most profitable, all right? Three levers. One is about organic growth options. And we already have a big pipeline of options. We are building a new bauxite mine in, in Australia as we speak. We're building a new mine in Mongolia. But we have lots of other options beyond that. That's one aspect. The second lever that we have is really about productivity. We have $50 billion of invested capital in the company. And I can tell you there are a lot of latent capacity, so we can do more. And we're pushing hard. We have committed to a $5 billion target in the next five years to the market. And we've got the momentum. And the last one, as you said, is about M&A. We have a watching brief in relation to m and That's absolutely clear. We will look at them. We are looking at them. But we will pursue m and only if it creates value for shareholders. Very high threshold. We're looking at it. We're on the right track. All right. You, you say you're not interested in being the largest. Let me bring you over to uh, the chart of your shares since the day you actually took over at Rio Tinto. So that was the 1st of July 2016. Yeah. I mean, that's quite an impressive, you know, increase in the share price. Do you worry that if you do uh, do an M&A that's a little bit too large, it will hurt that share price? Oh, Alan, you know, when we talk about superior cash return for the shareholders, it's not only about share price. It's about dividend. It's about share buyback, as we demonstrated today. You know. And yes, absolutely, the share price is very good. But you know, it's the past. The past is the past. I can't change it. I can't change it. So we look forward, looking forward, very positive. We've got the momentum. We have growth options. And we are absolutely committed yeah. to delivering superior cash return for shareholders in the short, medium, and long term. That's what we're doing. Mr. Jacques, wonderful to speak to you. Congratulations on the relative performance to Broken Hill Properties. You've really done quite an extraordinary <laughs> task over the last uh, 24 or even 36 months. I want to cut to the chase. You've got a joint venture in, in Resolution Copper, which is your belly, where copper is what you own personally, out in Arizona. How are you going to be not like BHP Billiton in the next 10 years? What's the religion so you don't buy it to be bigger? <laughs> As I said, for us, it's about being the most profitable one, right? And we are very clear to be profitable, we need to run our asset better. And that is the whole agenda around productivity. We committed $5 billion in the next five years, but we need to grow. And, and today, resolution, as you mentioned, is one option but in copper, which is in the USA. Um, we're going through the permitting process. As you know, in the US, the permitting is very complicated and very slow. We are progressing slowly. And um, I'm pretty confident there will be a mine at some point in time. What is the management process to not do things, but the management process to say no to certain projects that are bigger is better? Is that at the board level? Is that you on an airplane over the Pacific Ocean, or is it within the <laughs> internal Rio Tinto process? I think the answer is all of the above, to be honest. We have very clear governance um, across the company. And uh, there are a series of steps, uh, including the board, for obvious reasons. Um, the, the expectation, the threshold are very clear, very high. And, and let's be clear, one of the things we've changed in the last two years is to look not only at the NPV, but looking at IR 
internal rate of return, which change dramatically the way you look at project. Because otherwise, if right. you want to be the bigger, for sure, NPV, spend more money, you get bigger NPV. That's not how we look at it. It's about profitability, right. it's about quick returns, it's about investment IRR, as I said. This is absolutely like crucial then, folks, Sorry. if you're looking at the IRR of these transactions. How is that linked to your guess on the recovery of the commodity super cycle? How, how is your IRR elasticities adapt to the bear market that we've seen in commodities and hopefully the lift that I'm sure you see? So that's a very good question. So the way we look at it is to say, and that's a philosophy here, is to say it's better to pursue very few projects and do them very, very well than pursue many projects and have a very average delivery. So today we are very focused where we spend our money. It's mainly about two large projects. One is Amron in, uh, in Australia, which is bauxite, and the other one is Oyutogo in Mongolia. And because when you pursue a five or $10 billion project, you want to make sure your A team is working on it. So for us, as I said, it's about high quality growth. It's not for go the growth for the sake of it. Okay, on Oyutogo in Mongolia, which you just mentioned, what can you do to reduce some of the political risks surrounding that? You know, Rio Tinto has been around for 145 years. Welcome to mining. Our job is to operate in challenging countries. We've been able to do it for 145 years. Um, Oyutogo is a large project, very large project. It's a complicated one. Are there challenges? Yes. But if I look at my personal experience, I've been involved with Oyutogo for the last five years. Lots of challenges, but each time by working in a win-win approach with the government, we've been able to solve them. That's why you need to give the credit to Rio Tinto. We've been in, in business for 145 years, so we know how to do it. It's not easy but we know how to do it. Um, you've also said in the past that actually cost inflation is creeping back up, Absolutely. especially in the aluminium business, That's right? Cool. How, is that a big headwind for, for how Absolutely. much you can get from, from that industry? Yeah, it's not only in aluminium, it's across all, uh, all commodities now. We expect cost inflation to come back. Um, so far, we see inflation in terms of raw material and energy, but we expect at some point in time to have inflation in terms of wages. And that's why the mine to market productivity agenda is so important, not only to offset uh, inflation, but to even strengthen our, our EBDA margin. Okay, on the mining industry, so a little bit away from Rio Tinto, but are you worried that there's been a chronic underinvestment? from the mining industry, and so commodities prices will go through the roof in four or five years. What, what is the problem with that? Well, it's good for profits, but actually it's going to be difficult for demand. Will it not choke demand further down the road? No, I think the way, the way we look at it is, is very simple, and that's why, you know, our view as far as Rio Tinto is concerned is to invest through the cycle, all right? And mm -hmm. at this point in time, we have one of the very few companies who are investing, and we, you know, we're going to invest five to six billion dollars in the coming years, which is pretty significant quantum of money, so we're not going to slow down. I mean, you know, we are in the long-term business. I go back to this uh, point about Oyutogoi. We have, we're going to spend $5 billion in the next five years to build a new underground mine. It will take us above and beyond that seven years to ramp it up, and we'll have a mine for 40 years. So the truth of the matter, we have to take, it's a capital-intensive business. We have to take long-term perspective. And if you were to ask me a question about the prices, and you know I won't answer any question on the price before you ask, <laughs> is, you know, the price are whatever they are. We don't really care about the price today. We are looking about the long-term business, and we remember our commitment, and that's why today is such a good day for Rio Tinto, and we are proud of what the team has achieved. It's about delivering superior cash return in the short, medium, and long term. Right. We take a long-term perspective on this. What's point. your long-term view on China? So the, the China economy seems to be growing okay, but they're shifting away from maybe a more kind of infrastructure-led it, yeah. you know, commodities and tents. So where do you fit in China? So in the, in the short term, I mean, we don't have too much of a concern with China. I mean, we, as I said in December during our investor roadshow, that mm -hmm. we expect a slowdown in the coming months. But medium and long term, we are not that concerned. But you need to look beyond China. I mean, if you look at EVs, for example, you know, electric vehicle will pick up. There is no doubt. And we, as Rio Tinto, are very well positioned. We have a very strong position in, in aluminum. In Canada, for example, we have a very strong position in copper. So we are well positioned. Mm -hmm. If you think above and beyond China, at one stage, the One Belt, One Road initiative will, will create more infrastructure demand yeah. in Southeast Asia and in Africa. And once again, we are very well positioned on the back of our assets today.